Great. All right, guys. Good boy 32 here. Check it out. So we're sitting out here in the Freedom Shack, and it just occurred to me that I have not done a video on the 2A stuff in quite some time. Guys, I'll be honest with you, man. I take it really personal, and on occasion, it just it drives me nuts thinking about all these people who are doing whatever they can to implement a roadblock from you and I in exercising our 2A right. And that sounds right. It's a roadblock. They want to build that wall. Well, they're certainly doing it. I mean, up in Virginia, they went ahead and I guess they've uh, passed a bunch of stuff in the House and the Senate, and they're going to pass it on up to Northam to sign in all the stuff. One, talking about the rationing of uh, one firearm per month. And I think that is in regards to people uh, who are doing permits. But uh, they also backtracked and said anybody who has a CCW, just kind of like what they do here in North Carolina, is that I can go out and I buy as many guns as I want. But it, it does. It's not. It's vague in their uh, verbiage in the law. All right. So anyway, one of the things I want to talk about in this video is I want to have a discussion about liability. Where does liability for a property owner lie when they illustrate a this is a gun-free zone? Think about that. Uh, you're walking along. You've got your carry conceal uh, on you. Your family's with you, and you walk into an establishment that says. This is a gun-free zone, no dangerous weapons or firearms. Uh, in, in most cases, uh, if it's not a federal or state-run facility where there's law enforcement sitting out in front of it, I'd normally just disregard the signs anyway, and I'm probably sure you do as well. But there are people who do follow that, okay, I can't walk in here. I think that in Texas they got that uh, uh, Alt-8 or whatever it is sign that they put up. Well, anyway, uh, this goes all the way back to liability. And then there's another subject here is that there's a company called Lucky Gunner. You guys know that. You probably have bought fire, uh, uh, what do you call it? Um, cartridges, <laughs> bullets from these guys or anything else. But uh, right now they are being sued by a lady with a half last name of Jones whose uh, child was killed at the Santa Fe High School uh, shooting. Now, moving back, I know that anytime a child is injured or died, dies, or is hurt. I mean, guys, I'm a two-way guy all the way, but man, every, every time I wake up in the morning, I don't hear about some kind of tragedy like they had out there in Las Vegas. A lot of people think it's fake, but in any case, let's move on from that. Uh, every time I hear about this stuff, it breaks my heart because I am a two-A advocate, and I know every single time that something happens in the future, the first thing they do is that we got to ban this, we got to ban that, we got to ban this. They don't look at the shooter, they don't look at the property, they don't look at the the weaknesses and what's going on. I will tell you the funny story is that the last year at SHOT Show, uh, we had a bunch of guys who came in from out of town and they were carrying their firearms with, us, with them because we were going out to the desert to go shooting. And they were like, uh-uh, you got to store those in our lot box. So in any case... Uh, they are taking it seriously, and that's what they should do. But here's the deal. Lucky Gunner right now is being sued by a parent from the Santa Fe High School shooting. Uh, they say that Lucky Gunner should not have sold ammo to an underage person. I say this. They didn't do anything illegal. That kid somehow, some way, bought that, that ammo. Now, they are protected under the Lawful Commerce and Arms Act. And it's going to be a just, it's it's a sad situation because we all know it's the law, lawyers who are trying to make the money. And they go in there and they smart talk these parents into thinking that, hey man, we got a case against these people and the parents don't know any better. And they go, yeah, let's sue them. And the only thing they're doing is they're making life miserable for you and me. But they're not putting the blame where blame belongs. It's like the Parkland shooting down there in Florida. They had a, a a deputy, a resource officer, who failed to enter the school. And that guy, right now, Scott is his name, he's uh, he's in deep shit because of that. But they had the wherewithal to protect those kids, but they didn't act on it. So the liability, in my mind, doesn't fall on the firearms manufacturer. It doesn't fall on the bullet manufacturer or where they bought the firearm. It lies on what? The property owner who was sworn to protect your kids as they are while they're in attendance. That's the whole thing. My, my little daughter, my seven-year-old, got her ass beat by another kid, bleeding the whole deal. Had to take her to the hospital, call the police. And they're like, eh, well, we can't be held responsible for what another student does to your child. And I call bullshit on that. When they're in your care, you are responsible. So this goes forward. Liability of gun-free zones. 
where does the liability lie? Doesn't lie on the manufacturer of that firearm. Doesn't lie on the manufacturer of the bullet. It doesn't rely in the man, uh, the guy who sold the firearm to that individual because they probably went all through and got everything taken care of through a Nix 4473. So here's the deal. <laughs> That's exactly what a gentleman in the uh, Michigan House uh, believes. And I forgot to write his name down. But anyway, uh, look up House Bill 4975 because this is exactly what it does. Is it lays the liability where it should be. The individual or government entity who puts the sign on that door that says you cannot bring a firearm on these properties, period. Well, now what do they do? They disarmed you. Now, you do have the choice of whether or not you want to go in there, but if you are in there and all of a sudden there's a big old shooting, they remove your ability to provide your, for your own security. Well, that was I pulled that one out of my wazoo here. But you get what I'm saying is that when they put that sign out there, they're saying that you can't bring your firearm that you're legally able to carry concealed to protect you and your family as it states in our Second Amendment. Basically, what the 4975 does, it revokes governmental immunity from the lawsuits arising from injuries sustained on government property where guns are banned. There's another bill. House Bill 4976 would make government businesses or individuals that designate a property, a gun-free zone, responsible for the safety of the individuals that enter the property. <sighs> Get that? You put a sign up. You are now liable for my safety, as it should be. Now, again, they're going to say, well, that individual doesn't, if you don't want to go in there, you have the freedom to not go in there. It's the same way of flying. People are like, well, I should be able to carry my uh, handgun on an airplane. Well, you have the freedom to not fly. You don't have to fly. You don't have to go into that government building. You don't have to do this. School's a different story. Churches may be a different story. For the most part, I think churches are now letting individuals carry. I know that in my state, I well, let's just say, um, I don't go anywhere without my gun, period. And I don't go in anywhere that, well, the only place I don't go with my gun, like I said, is if there's a federal agent sitting at the door with a metal detector, or there's law enforcement all over the place, or they're wanding people. That way I know that if I go in there, then they're wanting everybody else that goes in there. And if somebody gets past that, well, you know what? Find a hiding place. Anyway, guys, let me know what your thoughts are down below. I thought this was real important. It goes from people who think it's it's okay to sue a manufacturer for some stupid as why don't we go ahead and sue the bus driver who brought that kid onto school or sue the manufacturer of the car that brought him in. Where does it end? Where does the... The statutes of liability end when it comes to a firearm. And as long as these asshole lawyers are allowed to continue this BS, it will never end. And our Second Amendment will be constantly under attack. This is why I don't do these things all the time, guys. I don't sit there and just talk about it. I'm emotional about it. Then I have to go to the range and shoot just to bring myself into a peaceful mindset. All right, well, that being said, guys, again... Let me know what your thoughts are down below in the comment section. Uh, liability, where does it end? I appreciate everybody watching, uh, and we always end it like this. God bless America. God bless his men, women in uniform, 24-7 for our freedom. Because freedom is not free. And I'm talking about those men and women in uniform who protect our constitutional rights as it was written by our founding fathers. 24-7 for our freedom because freedom's not free. <laughs> if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Let, help, help this thing go viral. I need a big one. Let's go to Boy32. I'm out.